our programs offer many languages, please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Indigenous people around the globe maintain a deep connection with Mother Earth. They tirelessly campaign and advocate for the planet's respect and protection, as well as carry out rituals, prayers, and sacred ceremonies to help Mother Nature maintain balance. Celebrating International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples, loving efforts to resolve the climate crisis. Watch on to find out more. Welcome, compassionate viewers. I'm Nelly. The gracious people of Tanzania wish that natural beauty is around you wherever you go. Welcome to celebrating International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples, loving efforts to resolve the climate crisis. Indigenous people may also be referred to as First Nation, Native or Aboriginal Peoples. The International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples is celebrated on August 9th annually in recognition of the first meeting of the United Nations Working Group on Indigenous Populations that took place in 1982. On this day, the United Nations reminds us of the Native people's contributions to the world. Globally, we honor their precious efforts to preserve and protect the planet for generations to come. Our show today highlights important work by indigenous peoples worldwide to bring awareness of the need to safeguard our Earth in light of accelerating global warming. We would like to begin with an excerpt from a message delivered by Supreme Master Ching Hai for World Unity Week in June 2020. The event was an online global convergence attended by notable representatives from various organizations, faiths, cultures, and indigenous groups to discuss urgent topics such as climate action. May God bless all First Nations. May God bless all of you, the indigenous people, everywhere on our planet. May God bless our Mother Earth because we are all nourished from earth and blessed by heavens. We are brothers and sisters, including all non-human beings on earth. Indigenous people around the globe maintain a deep connection with Mother Earth. They tirelessly campaign and advocate for the planet's respect and protection, as well as carry out rituals, prayers, and sacred ceremonies to help Mother Nature maintain balance. They constantly remind us of our interconnectedness. Our Mother Earth is in a sacred dance. <laughs> With our father, the sun, our grandmother, the moon. It is through this intrinsic connection that indigenous groups on all continents have been keenly aware of global warming and the toll that it is taking. We can sense the global warming because we can connect to the natural energy of the planet. We want to be here. We want to stay here because indigenous peoples are custodian of the planet. We hold the sacred ceremonies that connect to the nature. Hence, many indigenous communities have been speaking out, trying to wake up the world to take action to protect our Earth. Many of their messages are poignant, simple, and direct, such as those delivered by teenager Autumn Peltier of their Wekimikong First Nation in Canada. Water is alive and it does have a spirit, and she hurts every day because of what the people are doing to her today in the world. Polluting the water, dumping toxic waste, even just garbage. I do what I do because our water is sick. Mother Earth has been in existence for billions of years and she doesn't need us, we need her. 
Indeed, many scientists are issuing similar warnings about our environment and the urgent need to safeguard it. And indigenous people are also sharing scientific findings to alert the public at large to take action now. NASA released some really startling numbers. Planet Earth has hit 400 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere. Now, why is that important? Well, that number was determined as a number we needed to stay below in order for us to achieve climate stabilization. Now, not only have we hit 400 parts per million, but we are on a crash course to hit 450, 500, and so on and so forth. What's even more alarming is that planet Earth has not seen a number of 400 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere for millions of years. The need to take immediate steps to shield our planet is now evident. His Excellency, Miguel de Scotto Brockman, former president of the United Nations General Assembly, made this statement during his 2009 address to the Indigenous Peoples Global Summit on Climate Change. Indigenous peoples um, are vital to many ecosystems in their lands and territories and help enhance the resiliency of the ecosystems. In addition, Indigenous peoples interpret and react to the impacts of climate change in creative ways, drawing on traditional knowledge and other technologies to find solutions that society at large can replicate and to counter pending changes. Public demonstrations can be a loud voice for making people aware of climate change and serve as a call to action. With the media covering the events, the messages are then spread even farther. The Honorable Chief Phil Lane Jr. is a touching example of this when, in February 2013, he gave a moving speech during the climate change rally in Los Angeles, USA, where thousands of people were in attendance. We would not rest until our beloved Mother Earth is completely protected in its sacredness for our future generations, and that's why we're here. These policies also said there is no power in heaven or earth that will stop what it is that we have been destined to do in unprecedented, unified action. Unified action is a central theme for tackling climate crisis issues. Many Native communities have come together in solidarity by attending events and environmental summits across the globe, as well as delivering messages to world leaders. It's because it's important to, to be the voice of the Earth and take care, take care of the Earth, take care of Mother, Mother Earth, and then she will take care of us. That's why it's important to come together and, and gather like this and uh, unite. Because when we do it together and we support Mother Earth, she will support all people in this world. With unity comes collaboration, and many indigenous cooperatives, associations, committees, and organizations have been formed to address environmental degradation. One such group is the Association for Indigenous Women and Peoples of Chad, which works to safeguard human rights and the environment. The group partners with the Coordinating Committee of the Indigenous Peoples of Africa, a network of organizations of 135 indigenous peoples in 20 African countries. This makes it the largest indigenous peoples network in the world. The groups also help with climate change adaptation. Those watching and living in harmony with the nature help us to give better information for adaptations. And now when we know with the climate change there is a lack of resources. So for these resources and with our observation of the nature is help us to make in balance and manage better the shrinking resources and sharing with the communities. More indigenous people are also adopting the vegan diet to protect the environment because of an increased awareness that animal livestock production is inherently cruel as well as the worst polluter and desecrator of the earth. 
The Livestock's Long Shadow United Nations report, as well as subsequent papers by scientists worldwide, describe that factory farming creates more greenhouse gases than all of the world's transportation combined. In fact, it is the number one source of such human-generated gases. It pollutes drinking water, destroys forests, and causes desertification. My name is Lewis Eagle Warrior. I'm a Native American. I've been vegan for 30 years. It's mostly for the animals, but of course there are health and environmental benefits. Dr. Margaret Robinson, a member of the Mi'kmaq people and assistant professor in the Department of Sociology and Social Anthropology at Dalhousie University, Canada, has stated, there's the common sense in my community that we have a responsibility to protect the water, the air, the soil, the plants and the animals. And I think we have that in common with veganism. With the continued efforts of our indigenous brothers and sisters, the future for our planet is becoming more optimistic. Let us remember that what was once an oppressed voice is now the intellectual speech of the landscape. I believe for tomorrow, for our grandchildren and your great-great-grandchildren, it will be a vibrant one because we are committed to making it so. Our appreciation, all Native groups and communities worldwide for taking steps to raise humanity's consciousness with regards to gently treading on Mother Earth and halting global warming as soon as possible. May heaven bless and shield you all. All information concerning the scientific evidence of climate change and its solution is in Supreme Master Ching Hai's book, From Crisis to Peace, free for download at crisistopeace.org. Radiant viewers, it has been a pleasure to have your company on today's program. Coming up next is Fasting Ourselves Out of the Pleasure Trap, Dr. Alan Goldhammer, Vegan, Part 1 of 3, right after Noteworthy News here on Supreme Master Television. May our dreams for a healthy and vibrant planet be realized very soon. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash CTAW. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com baroblique schedule et suprememastertv.com baroblique CTAW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule et suprememastertv.com barra inclinada CTAW. برامجنا متوفرة بالعديد من اللغات يرجى زيارة suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule و suprememastertv.com forward slash ctaw